Hi. Um, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, this is me, Adel Bibi, and this is a joint work with Hani Atani, supervised by Dr. Bernard Ghanem. And I'll be talking about uh, solving uh, large scale lassos in the free domain. So I'll start off with the, some of the boring materials. So I'll introduce to you the lasso and some important applications of computer vision. So this is uh, the optimization problem that we seek to solve. Essentially, we want to find a, a, a vector C that fits the data with an L1 uh, prior that induces sparsity. So we seek to find a sparse solution that best explains the data. Um, the problem in hand is uh, uh, convex, however it's not smooth. And we will donate the matrix uh, throughout this presentation, A, which is often fat, uh, as a dictionary, and uh, solution C as a sparse code. So uh, as for the applications and where large scaleness uh, come into play, uh, we'll examine a classical face recognition uh, as, an, as an example. So for, for face recognition, for instance, uh, the dictionary matrix A is composed here of, say, several blocks, T blocks in this uh, particular fashion. Each block represents a concatenation of, say, uh, vectorized image patches of uh, a given person for each, uh, for each block uh, under the different lighting conditions, for instance. So if we have a, a T number of blocks, we have T number of people to recognize uh, among. Uh, so given a new test sample B that we require to determine to what person it belongs to, uh, we look at the solution C and we look at where the most non-zero elements are condensed and that gives us an intuition to what class label does uh, B belong to. So here we can see easily where large scaleness come into play. So as for the number of columns, the, number, the more number of sets or people that we want to distinguish among, um, the more number of columns we have and obviously the more diversity within each column, each block or person we have, the more columns we have. As for the number of rows, well it is a uh, vectorized image patches and that's uh, self-explanatory. So in either ways, uh, uh, the dictionary A is large in at least one of the two dimensions, if not both uh, together. So other the applications obviously expand to uh, tracking and subspace clustering, uh, image and painting, and uh, many other more. So in general, the, the, the deterministic lasso solvers are either first order or second order methods. And in here, I emphasize deterministic solver to highlight that there exists some uh, randomized methods to solve large scale linear systems in particular, and there has been a direction towards uh, solving uh, the lasso. However, this is not the focus of this work. So our uh, first order deterministic solvers enjoy inexpensive iteration costs with linear rates often. Uh, proximal point methods and EDMMs are a good example for that. As for uh, second order methods, uh, uh, we, uh, we require to compute uh, the Hessian or proxy, uh, proxy version of it so that ha uh, have it uh, high exp uh, expensive iteration costs but having enjoying uh, quadratic uh, rates. And primal dual interior point methods are a good example for that. So however, the focus of this talk, as I mentioned, would be on the deterministic first order methods. So if you look at uh, the lasso problem, I would like to apply EDMM directly to it. Uh, there are two ways. We either apply EDMM to the lasso or we apply EDMM to the dual version of the lasso and uh, we'll donate them as PL ADMM and DL ADMM respectively. And the bottleneck really here is solving a linear system in primal lasso it's uh, of size uh, uh, n by n, while in the dual lasso it's for size of m by m. Um, well, given that the matrix A is often fat, has more columns than a number of rows, so it's, it's more attractive to actually go for the dual lasso uh, intuitively. And that is actually, um, um, has been shown empirically, this is one of the uh, best uh, deterministic first order solvers to tackle the problem empirically. And uh, it naturally handles uh, linear constraints. Uh, however, it still requires solving a linear system which is not trivially parallelized over multiple GPUs and does not uh, do well when it comes to scalability issues. So what we really want here is to have a, a, a solver that has a low iteration complexity, enjoys the linear rates, and can be trivially parallelized over multiple GPUs. So what we really need, uh, we, uh, the question that we asked ourselves is, uh, do we benefit from lifting the problem to a higher dimension and equip that new dimension with some structure that can help us eventually solving the problem? So well, that's exactly what we've done. I would generate an even bigger problem uh, than what we started with by looking at each one of these columns and generating the original matrix A and generating a, a circular matrix out of it. So if the original matrix A was of size m pi n, then u a tilde is now of size um, m pi m n. And to make sure both problems are in fact equivalent, extra constraints are added to, to force that the coefficients of the new sparse code C tilde uh, corresponding to the extra columns we have appended to be exactly zero. Uh, concatenating to the linear constraint DC tilde equals to zero. So uh, I'll keep the intuition uh, behind this uh, lifting problem and how, how it correlates to some dictionary learning methods, for example, the convolution sparse coding, uh, where uh, this is, uh, looks very similar to the inference step of the convolution sparse coding. However, the sparse codes are constrained to belong to the set of uh, discrete impulse functions. Uh, but we can discuss uh, the details of this uh, offline. 
So here's the big picture. And uh, on your left is the primal and dual versions of the lasso, where PL ADMM, dual ADMM is applying ADMM to each. On your right is the lifted problem, and right beneath it is the dual version. And FFT lasso is essentially applying ADMM to the uh, dual version of the lifted problem, for similar reasons why DL ADMM is more attractive than the primal ADMM. So all right, so we need to look at the solutions uh, for uh, the update solutions for FFT lasso to see why is it exactly more attractive than dual ADMM. So the dual variable psi update, the updates uh, for psi, for instance, still requires solving linear systems. However, there is structure in A tilde, uh, A tilde Hermitian, which allows us now to solve the updates completely in the Fourier domain by using the diagonalization of these circulant matrices. And we no longer now need to do any linear system uh, uh, solving, nor matrix vector multiplication, and the FFT is the most expensive operation. And in fact, if we look at the, all the remaining updates, all of them involve only element-wise operations, and again, FTs are the most expensive operations. So lastly, the dual variables here of the dual problem are the primal uh, variables. So TC tilde here is in fact the sparse codes that we seek, the lifted sparse codes that we seek, and they are often updated with a standard dual ascent step. We, however, in FT lasso solve the problem with the Nestroff's like update to improve the conversion. So Q here is related to the condition number, however, we set it as hyperparameter throughout the experiments. So upon convergence, the final solution C tilde can be, C, can be obtained simply by downsampling the solution C tilde. So uh, to give you an idea of the overall complexity, FF, FFT Lasso's most expensive operation is computing uh, FFTs uh, with MN log M uh, as compared to at most uh, M cubed for uh, linear system solving. Uh, this indicates that FFT Lasso is best suited for matrices of, uh, that satisfy this inequality. Uh, this is the case for dictionaries that are large in both dimensions, however, does not have significantly more columns than it has rows. So uh, since that I mentioned all the operations um, are element-wise, I will have to look first at some of the synthetic experiments uh, that we have done. So uh, we compare FT Lasso first on two GPUs, uh, Maxwell and Pascal, against a multi-core CPU version of dual ADMM. So despite that CPU cores are much faster than the GPU cores, sometimes three times as fast, and there are many powerful linear system solvers, FT Lasso still outperforms dual ADMM for uh, larger problems. And of course, uh, it's, it's not faster for the smaller problems. And you can notice that there are some dips in the performance. They happen exactly at powers of two. And we can discuss the details of this offline and how to circumvent the, these uh, sort of issues. Um, another experiment is on synthetic data as well. So we compare now both methods on uh, the GPU. Uh, so when Q is one, we are now here performing a standard dual ascent step, where Q equals 30 or not one, this is the Nestroff's update. So notice that actually up, up, uh, updating the, using the Nestroff's on dual ADMM actually improves the uh, dual ADMM. However, FFT Lasso benefits more since it has, requires more number of iterations overall to converge, since it has a significantly more number of variables. So uh, we also managed to get our hands on the uh, 24 gigs uh, P6000. So we have added another uh, data point to that previous plot, which is um, for matrices of 16,000 by 16,000. And uh, we noticed that the uh, improvement in speed could go up to six to uh, 10 folds. Um, so the question here is what happens if we started with a dictionary that is so large that we can't even fit it into one single GPU? Uh, what can we do there? Well, that's easy because now we can actually split that dictionary into arbitrary number of vertical splits and throw each split in a different GPU and aggregate the results at each iteration. However, that requires us to have an overhead of M, uh, vectors of size M to aggregate at each iteration. So the question is, can we do better than that? And the answer is yes. Uh, if we break that dictionary uh, uh, into even and odd indices and we recursively apply that, we can actually now tackle the problem where we can relate the FFTs of longer vectors with respect to their smaller uh, components. And thus, we can actually now break the, mat uh, the matrix into arbitrary number of pieces and throw each piece in on a GPU, either it was a vertical or horizontal split. And now the overhead is also reduced to M over V, where V is the number of splits horizontally. So uh, to remind you, the face recognition, so all the previous ones were synthetic data. So if we look at some uh, face recognition data set, we conducted it on Yale Base B data set. So in both experiments here, we have 10,000 images. And uh, on your left, we have a total of 2 to the 12 pixels, uh, vectorized image patches, which is the number of rows. And on the right, is 2 to the 13 number of pixels. So for this experiment, we compare FT Lasso to the dual ADMM by giving both solvers the same exact amount of time. 
and we compare the quality of the solution for both methods with a pre-computed uh, solution, higher accuracy pre-computed solution. So FTLA2 converges to much better solutions that, uh, in dual than ADMM uh, for a fixed amount of time. And this also verifies why large scaleness going to large scale is really important because as you can see, going from 2 to the 12 to the 2 to the 13 pixels, we jump from 92 to 97% accuracy in recognition rate. So to sum up, uh, uh, FT Lasso is easily distributed. It's also memory efficient, which is something we can discuss later on. And it can naturally handle, of course, uh, linear, constraint with, uh, linear constraint without actually added any complexity. For example, what if we want to tackle problems like constrained lassos? And some future direction would be looking at some other non-smooth regularizers since we're mostly interested in the data fitting term. So we have a code for this, thanks to these folks for helping in several development. So we have a TensorFlow version of it uh, for a multi-GPU multi version of it where you can just uh, specify the number of GPUs and would it, uh, distribute it over them. Uh, thank you for your listening, um, and please come see us at Post 10. <laughs>